Today we are continuing in our series called Sex, God's Way, and this is actually a nine-part series. And for those of you all who are newer to our church, this is actually part number five. And we've come this far in our journey where we're seeing people now get set free. We're seeing prison doors be, be opened. We're hearing the, the stories of people that were bound to sexual immorality. They've now pivoted and they're living a life of holiness. And I wanted to park right here and put our hands together and celebrate what they've done. Come on, let, let's celebrate those who are coming out. Come on, let's celebrate those who've said hello to holiness. Come on, we appreciate you, we celebrate you, and we're gonna do life together, amen? Over the last four weeks, we've learned a lot about sin. We've defined sin as what class? Everybody shout, missing the mark, okay? That means that God has a mark. He has a way that we should be living. And when we miss that mark, the Bible defines that as sin. God has a standard. And we, when we say, God, I don't want to live life based upon your standard. I want to make up my own standard. The Bible calls that sin. When we say God sets the bar here, but I don't want to climb over his bar, so I'm going to lower it so I can do whatever I want to do. That attitude of rebellion is what the Bible calls sin. And what we've learned about sin is that sin is not our friend. Please tell your neighbor, sin is not your friend. Why is it not your friend? Now, Satan's job is to make sin look good, feel good, and even um, um, be fun. And sometimes it is fun. Sometimes it does look good. Sometimes it even feels good, but sin will kill you. Romans 6.23 says this, that the wages of your sin is what? Death. So there is a wage to sin. There is a cost to sin. And here's the truth. You're either going to pay now or you're going to pay later, but you will pay. And because sometimes when we sin, we don't see the repercussions right away. We're like, whatever, I'm going to continue to do whatever I want to do, not knowing that you're killing yourself because the wages of sin is death. Are y'all with me today? Now, one of the greatest tools that the enemy uses to get you to sin is what? Last week, temptation. Everybody say temptation. And so Satan loves to use temptation to kind of bring you away. And this is how we've defined temptation. Temptation is an enticement to sin. Somebody shout an enticement to sin. A strong desire to sin. Somebody say a strong desire. An urge to sin. Somebody say an urge to sin. Let me add one more today. It is also a lure. A lure. A lure. It's a funny word. A lure. Everybody say a lure. Doesn't that feel weird saying it? Lure. It's a lure. All right. Any fishermen in the house today? By show of hands, any fish people like to go fishing? Y'all know how I feel about fishing. But whenever you go fishing, you use a hook. And what do you put on the hook class? Everybody say bait. What is the bait supposed to do? It is supposed to what? Lure the fish away. Why? So that you can catch it, kill it, and eat it. It's the same way that Satan wants to lure you with sin so he can catch you in sin. He can kill you in your sin. And I don't think he eats you, but he does eat some of your lunch, so whatever. Here's the key. Don't fall for the lure. And one of the most powerful lures that he uses when it comes to attracting you to sexual immorality is pornography. And so today we're about to get free from the trap of pornography. Today we're about to break some addictions. Matter of fact, can we put our hands together in advance for what God's going to do? Come on, somebody, what God's going to speak. Come on, somebody, how God's going to move. Hey, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Today is part number five of our series, and we're calling it Exposing the Bait of Pornography. Write that down. And prophetically, I want to declare over you, don't bite the bait. <sighs> don't bite the bait. <sighs> Go ahead, tell somebody around you, don't bite the bait. Matter of fact, push the people in front of you. Come on, push the people in front of you and tell them, don't bite the bait. Come on, you can't lean up while they're leaning up. You got to, come on, Gainesville, say, don't bite the bait. Don't bite the bait. And when I got hold of this series title, Exposing the Bait of Pornography, at the same time as I read that sentence, the Lord showed me this. Y'all know what this is? What is this? It's a hook. All right? Now, if you went fishing and you threw this out into the water by itself, would you catch any fish? No. no. Why? Because there needs to be some bait on the what? And the bait needs to be what? Luring. All right? And when fish sees this, they don't see luringness. They don't see something that they desire. They see danger. They see something that could possibly kill them. And I just felt like I wanted to prophetically declare over you guys that when you go home 
and you see the lure towards pornography with your device and to open up your iPad and your laptop, instead of seeing what's luring you, I want you to see this. Matter of fact, I want you to see my face in this hook so everybody look at me. I want, I literally, I want to come to you and when you open up your phone and when you get on your computer and you are being lured with booty and breast and you're being lured with thighs, you're being lured with a six pack. Come on, somebody. You're being lured with a man, with one man being with a man and a man being with two women and three women being with five men and six men coming into a bar and getting one woman. And you don't understand that there is a lure on the hook. I don't want you to see the booty and the breast because that ain't what it really is. What it really is, is this right here. And I need you to see it just like a fish would see it and don't take the bait. Come on, somebody. So everybody take a picture of me. Come on, zoom in very quickly because I want you to see my face when you turn on your phone. You can put me on your screenshot, actually. Just matter of fact, just put me, all right, I want you to see this right here. Somebody say, don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. And so I want to start off with some alarming statistics. All right, y'all ready? Let's go to school. Research has shown that pornography use is correlated with physical changes in the brain. The visual stimulus of pornography hijacks the brain's reward system and overwhelms it with unnatural prolonged dopamine levels. The result is that the brain physically deteriorates in shape, size, and chemical balance. Long story short, pornography destroys your soul. A 2019 study found that a porn consumption increased the risk of depression in adults. One study looking at over 1,000 university students found that compulsive internet pornography usage was correlated with extreme severe levels of depression, anxiety, and stress in both genders, okay? Now, some of you all have been fighting depression and you drink and alcohol is a depressant and you watch pornography and that's why you're sad. You need to get rid of the depressants and get the joy of the Lord. Pornography is a cancer and we don't tolerate cancer. We have to eradicate it. There's a study that was done to kind of show you how long it took certain products to reach 50 million users. This shows you how prevalent pornography is. Listen to this. It took the telephone 50 years to reach a place where it had 50 million people calling each other. It took the television 22 years to reach 50 million users. It took the internet seven years. Y'all remember dial up? We had that for a few years. We was like, well, this is You know, at first we thought it was all that. Now looking back, like, what were we thinking? (laughs) Right? But it took a porn site 19 days from the time it launched to reach 50 million users. (laughs) One of the most popular porn sites has 2.14 billion visits per month. Not year, not decade, per month. And it's more than Instagram, TikTok, Netflix, and Pinterest combined. 28,000... 258 people are watching porn every second. That was 30,000 people. Another 30,000 people just clicked on. Another 30,000 people just clicked on. Pornography is a cancer that will destroy your soul. It cannot be tolerated. Like, it ain't that big a deal. No, it's a big deal. It has to be eradicated. Pornography is not just a men's issue. There's a huge upswing in women watching pornography and both men and women masturbating. You know, someone reached out currently and they said, Pastor, I need you to talk about masturbation and what the Bible says. And truthfully, you you say, well, Pastor Ken, is masturbation a sin? I would probably lean on the side that yes, it is. However, the Bible is not very loud about it. Matter of fact, you won't find that in the Bible anywhere. There was a guy named Onan who spilled his seed on the ground, but it wasn't about masturbation. He was not trying to give his brother's wife who died a, a child and that was considered sin. But just because it's not in the Bible doesn't mean that it's permissible. To smoke crack cocaine is not in the Bible, but you probably shouldn't do that. Am I right? Right? And so there are some things. Now, if you look at the her- hermeneutics of the word, from you will see the spirit of holiness would tell us that sex has been created by God for three distinct purposes. Number one, God has created sex so that we could be fruitful and multiply, and so to have babies. Number two, God's created sex for the consummation of marriage between man and woman. Number three, God has created sex for enjoyment and also intimacy between a married man and a married woman. Anything outside of that parameter, I would say stay away from. So I don't masturbate. Tabitha doesn't masturbate because it does not lead you to Jesus. It it can be a gray area. You can do whatever you want to do, but it's what I call self-sex. 
Now, sex in God's original intent is not for you to please yourself. It's for you to please your spouse. It's for intimacy with your spouse. It's for enjoyment with your spouse. It's not for you to go home and handle yourself. So one is founded in the agape love of God and the other is found in selfishness. You do what you want to do. And so pornography, back to my statistics, and it's not just a man thing and a woman thing, it's actually eating up the next generation. And this is alarming because I got kids, but listen, 90% of children ages eight to 16 have viewed porn. Okay, I don't know, I don't know if you got that. You're still stuck on masturbation. Um, 90% of children ages eight to 16, nine out of 10 of our young people have been exposed to pornography between the ages of eight to 16. The largest consumer of porn of boys ages 12 to 17. And as a father of a 12 year old, I'm st I started my sex conversations at seven, eight, nine years old on that level. And now I increase it every single six to 12 months. Okay, what do you know about this? And we speak about it. See, I'm not waiting for the church to parent my kids. I'm not waiting for the government to parent my kids. I'm not waiting for the Boys and Girls Club to parent my kids. I'm going to go home and train up my child in the way they should go. And I think we need to start talking about our anatomy and our body parts and give them the right perspective of sex and sexuality before the devil hooks them with that which is wrong. Mm. First time that I came in contact with pornography, I was about 11 to 12 years old, innocent as can be. Grew up in Southern West Virginia and riding my bike like I always would do. And there was an older boy who was my next door neighbor. Actually, he was about five or six doors down at the end of the street. He's about 15 or 16, he got a few years on me. And I was riding my bike and he was in the front yard and he was like, Ken, come here. And I got off my bike and I went up. He says, I wanna show you something in the house. So I went into the house, his parents was home, and he pulled out a VCR tape, y'all remember those? And he put it, I think VHS is what it was, right? And you put it inside of the VCR, and he turned on this movie, and that's the first time at 11 or 12 years old I was exposed to pornography, okay? And then he took the tape out, he kind of winded it back, because he said, we gotta get it right, so my dad knows, don't know, we, I took it from him. And so he wanted to kind of wind the tape and get it just right, and then I left. And I'm not gonna say that I started to desire pornography from that age because I was so young, I didn't even really know what I was watching, but it was a seed that was sown. And how many of you all know that all seeds will come forth with a harvest? Now for years of my life, I lived in sexual immorality. I protected my sexual immorality. I made excuses like some of us do, like, oh, it ain't that bad for my sexual immorality, you know? And I can't say if it was because of what I was exposed to, but I can tell you this, that it didn't help. But somebody say amen. amen. Fast forward into college. I wasn't the kind of guy that would go out and look for pornography all the time. Every once in a while I would. But if it came to me, I wasn't going to put it down, you know. And the bad part about it is that I can still remember images of what I saw 25 years ago. I can still see it, meaning that it marks your soul in a way that doesn't go away. Now, you can renew your mind and renew your spirit, but pornography is a cancer that can't be tolerated. It has to be exterminated. Are y'all with me today? Ah, okay. And so here's the good news. Y'all ready for good news? All right. For the last 22 years, I've been, I've been pornography free. 22 years. No pornography. All right. No pornography anywhere around me. 22 years. And I travel more than most of you guys. It's on my hotel TV screen. I have a phone just like you have a phone. And not only have I been pornography free for 22 years, I haven't even looked at a nude picture in over 22 years, okay? Now, I looked at a couple that popped up and I was like, where'd that come from? And I got away from it. I know some of y'all, y'all got stuff that pop up. You're like, okay, what's that? I don't do that. I'll be like, I rebuke you devil in the name of Jesus, 22 years. Because sometimes it's not just the hard stuff that you get into first, it's the soft stuff. Sometimes it's not pornography, you just started with the swimsuit addiction. You just went to the Sports Illustrated and they got all of the athletes and they're naked and they're celebrating their bodies. I thank God for our bodies. There's nothing wrong with our bodies, but at the same time, I wanna make sure that my eyes are pure and my heart is pure before God. And I remember back in the day, anybody used to, yeah, I used to, there was a Jet magazine and it had a beauty of the week on page, page 78 that I would always. What I'm saying is that there are some appetizers that lead to the main course. Maybe it's not pornography yet for you, but you keep swiping left because your girl who's in a bikini or that person that you work with putting out pictures and you just, you just, you just enlarge. Uh, Y'all. 
They ain't come to keep it real with the preacher today, Elijah. All right. And I also let you know that I've been free for 22 years from all of that because I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I know some of y'all like, well, that's just you, Pastor. You don't understand what I've been exposed to. You don't understand what I've done. You don't I see this on the internet all the time. If I tell people I ain't cussed, they're like, well, you don't understand. I grew up, my parents were cussing all the time. Why you deflect so much stuff? Stop it, please. Okay? Listen, I am a man just like you a man. I'm a human being like you're a human being. I'm tempted just like you tempted. I got a flesh, and my flesh don't know the difference between Tabitha and Sheila. Okay? I don't know Sheila. Sheila is who I'm thinking of, but I'm, that's, I don't even know. Sheila, we love you. God bless you. I'm just saying. Um, my, my flesh, listen, come on, y'all. Don't, don't make this a pastor thing. Like I'm holier than thou. I'm not holier than thou. I got two eyes, and I see. And I see a lot, but I have to discipline what I see. I got to live with some parameters in my life. I got to kill my flesh. See, some of you all, you make so many excuses like we don't know you. No, I know you. I know you. Matter of fact, I would suggest to you that I got more warfare and temptation than most of y'all in this room. Because if the devil can take me out, the sheep will scatter. You don't even know the pressure and the warfare that men and women of God are under right now. That's why when you see the average pastor fall, you know, people on the internet, they kick them while they down. Not me. I say, God, help them out. God, restore them. God, give them grace. Because you don't even know this level of devil till you get to this level. Who are you to think that you couldn't fall the same way? It's only by his grace that I can save 22 years. It's not my intellect, not 22 years. It's not my willpower, not 22 years. But I tell you what I do do. I live my life with parameters and disciplines, and I keep my hands clean and my heart pure, and you can do the same. So when I say I've been free for 22 years, you should post about it. You should be like, oh, my God, my pastor been free for 22 years, and if God has done it for me, he can also do it for you. Meaning that he's no respecter of person. He wants to do it for anybody. Oh, come on, Gainesville. I can't hear you out there. Watch this. So pornography is especially effective at ending marriages. The American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers questioned 350. Can you bring it on the side screens too? 350 divorce attorneys and found that roughly 60% reported that internet porn played a significant role in divorces. With excessive interest in online porn contributing to more than half of such cases. Porn is most often cited amongst complaints of constructive desertion, meaning that the spouse is at fault for emotionally abandoning their partner and withdrawing from sexual intimacy. So what pornography does is it pulls you out of the real world into a virtual one. It pulls you out of the ability to meet emotional needs of the one you're in covenant with so that you can make your own needs an idol. I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. While you handle your needs, meet your needs, your spouse is dying because you've literally hijacked the relationship just to focus on you. And the study says that 60% of divorced people are saying that this is the problem. Porn is a cancer. We gotta deal with it, y'all. And so what does the Bible say? I'm glad you asked because all of our answers are found in the word. The word pornography is not a biblical word because it's a newer word. But the word construct is made of two compound Bible words, Greek words, porneia and graphi. Porneia and graphi. And I don't know if it's graphi or graphe, G-R-A-P-H-E, I don't know. But the English word pornography is where we get Part of the root word is pornea, and this is what it's translated. So it's all through the New Testament, and the word pornea in the Greek is being translated into whoredom, fornication, adultery, and also sexual immorality in the Bible. Now, a great example is found in Galatians 5. Everybody go there. Galatians 5. Come on, Gainesville. Let's go. We're going to do a Bible workout today. Now, have you guys ever read about the work of the flesh? It's found in Galatians 5. After the work of the flesh, Galatians 5 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Our job as believers is to develop the fruit of the Spirit and to say no to the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh are obvious. Here they are. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, 
drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, go back up to verse number 19. The first one, this is what we call the list of the works of the flesh. These are the things that we got to stay away from. The first one is sexual immorality. Some translation says adultery and fornication. This term sexual immorality is coming from the Greek word porneia. Pornography or the root word thereof is in the Bible. And it's found all throughout the Bible. It is a blanket statement that includes everything from bestiality, homosexuality, incest, adultery, fornication, lust, and also pornography. It is the word pornea. It is a blanket word that means sexual filth and perversion. Okay, so what does the Bible say? Are y'all ready for this? Psalms 101. Let's go there. Psalms 101. And for the sake of participation, everybody, let's read this together. Ready, read. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Say that in part again. It shall not cleave. Come on, say it by faith like you mean it. It shall not cleave. When it comes to sexual perversion and pornography, you have to put your foot in the sand and say, it shall not cleave to me. All right. Now, Psalms 101 begins by saying, I will set no wicked thing before my what? Okay, so you have to call pornography what it is. It's wickedness, okay? Now, if you don't start there, you don't know how to escape it or get away from it. If you're like, oh, it ain't that bad. Everybody's doing it. It's just so popular. No, the devil has his claws in you. It's wickedness. Everybody say wickedness. And you can't play around with wickedness, okay? Now, it says, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. And so what that means is that you can actually set your will. Have you ever heard of a thing called willpower? Like if you're trying to start a new workout, you need a little bit of willpower. Now, when it comes to the kingdom of God, willpower alone won't do it because you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we go out and we try to do it without God and it ain't going to go far. But I'm telling you, most things in the kingdom start with willpower. Because God has given you the power of choice. He's given you a free moral, he's given you a will of your own. You can choose to worship the devil or you can choose to worship God or you can choose to hang out in the middle and say, I don't know what to believe and we can't prove it, whatever that has been your choice, okay? Now, you can set your will, please leave it up, just leave it up. It says that I will set no wicked thing. That means I will, meaning that you can make that determination today in Gainesville and online that I set my will. Pornography is in my past. It is not in my future. Meaning that you have to set your own mind, not your neighbor's mind, not your mama's mind, not nobody else's mind. You got to set your own will that I ain't going to do this no more. So help me God, you can do that today. It's a setting of the will. Now, if you go to Psalms uh, 111, I think, or 119, go to Psalms 119. Let's read this one together. Ready, read. It says, turn my eyes away from what? Worthless things. Preserve my life according to, and leave that up. It says, turn my, now this is my prayer for you all, that when you go home and you turn on your phone, you turn on your devices, that you will learn to turn away your eyes from worthless things, okay? That's my prayer, that you will have a, a, an empowerment of God from this moment on to be able to turn away from worthless things. And you have to look at pornography as 100% worthless, okay? It's not adding to your life, okay? It's not making you closer to Jesus. It's not giving you a better job or anything like that. It is actually destroying your soul. And so what the Bible says is that we are going to turn away from worthless things. Over, this is my secret sauce. It's not that I have a special anointing. It's not that I'm holier than you. It's just that I've made up my mind that when I see stuff that look good, I'm going to turn away. Okay? It doesn't mean that I don't see it because I do see it. I think we all see it. I'll be asking my wife, wife, do you see that? Because I see it. I remember one time we used to go to this gym in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, and there was this big booty girl going to the gym. And her booty was so rotund. I mean, this thing was crazy. It was like she had on these tights. It was, it was like two kids. I mean, it, it was crazy. And I would go home and I'd say, sweetheart, did you see that girl's booty? And for the last 25 years, we've been she know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, I see it. She see it. But I'm not going to stay there. You got to learn to, even though I see it, I'm turning away from worthless things. That ain't going to help me. That's not going to promote me. That's not making me more holy. Come on, somebody. 
I got to turn away. <laughs> I was going to say everybody say rotund, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, let's try Job 31, 1. So what should we do then? Job 31, 1. Okay. Job 31, 1. Let's read this one together. Y'all ready? Come on, Gainesville. Everybody read. I made a covenant with my eyes not to look. Brother Job is giving us revelation. So you can make a covenant with your eyes. You can make a covenant, an oath, and an agreement with your eyes. What does that mean? That God has given you authority over your body parts, including your eyes. And you can make a decision that I will set no wicked thing before my eyes, that I will turn away from worthless things, and I'm going to make a covenant with my eyes, meaning that I'm making an agreement that eyes, you're going to do what I want you to do, okay? God has given you the same power that rose Jesus from the dead will help you make a covenant with your eyes. Some of y'all need to go home today and talk to your eyes and say, eyes, you're not going to look at what you want to look at anymore. I'm going to tell you what we're going to be looking at because whatever you focus on shall expand make a covenant with my eyes, but watch this, not to look lustfully at a young woman, okay? Now, the principle is universal because you can look lustfully at a man, you can look lustfully at a woman, you can look lustfully at all kinds of different people, right? And the key word here is lustfully because there is a spirit that is motivating the pornography industry, There's a spirit that's motivating the hustlers in the Playboy magazine. See, you you don't understand it. There's a spirit, and we want to call a spade today because it's the spirit of lust. And if you were honest with me, those of you all who have been exposed, you know when you're watching it that there's something that comes on you. It almost is like you can feel the hair stand up, almost like, you know how you have the Holy Spirit? Think about that for a second. The triune nature of God, he names himself Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. And just like there is a Holy Spirit, there is also a lust spirit. And that lust spirit is the spirit that kind of creeps in the back. Nobody knows what it is. And that's why we're going to call them out today. It's not just your flesh. Some of y'all, it is your flesh. You know, your flesh is unsaved. But some of y'all, it's the spirit that's creeping out in the back. And a lot of people don't point the spirit out. And he likes to creep, creep, keep it on the down low, you know. Think about it for a second. Every strip club, the spirit of lust is there. Every nightclub, you think, well, I don't drink no more, but I'm going out with my friends. You're in the wrong environment. The spirit of lust is there. Every magazine, every porno video, the spirit of lust is there. And he's hanging out in the background and people don't call him out. It's like that movie that you would watch. You know, I watched some movie and this is like the good, guy, the good guy's running through the airport and the bad guy's just watching him. But the good guy don't know who the bad guy is. But the bad guy's like in every scene, you can just see him hanging out. He's, he's everywhere the good guy goes, the bad guy's there, and you can just see him. And we're in the movie like, get away. We see the bad guy. But you don't see him because the, that, the spirit of lust, he likes to hide out. And so the, the way that you overcome the spirit of lust is the first thing you got to do is you got to call him out. Like I see you. See, some of you all don't understand that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. There are devils and demons that are loose that are trying to control by the prince of the power of the air. And you got to learn how to cast it out and cast it off. It is a spirit of lust. You know, every, come, think about some of the videos. Okay, two girls with five girls, three girls with five guys, five guys with little girls. It's a, oh, if you were discerning enough to stop for a minute, and quit letting your flesh do whatever it wants to do. If you peeled back the curtain, you would see the spirit of lust manipulating it all in the background. So what you have to do is you got to bind up the spirit of lust. You know, there's a scripture that says what we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And what we loose on earth shall be loose. And this is what binding means. When you say, I bind you addiction, I bind you depression, I bind you lust, it basically is saying that that spirit can't do what it wants to do anymore. And when the Bible, it's a warfare term, meaning that what you bind on earth is what's bound in heaven. Basically, God says, I've given you the authority in my name, now use it. And it says, when you bind on earth what's bound in heaven, then you can loose on earth. So the first thing you got to do is know that you're being influenced by a stank spirit called lust. You got to open up your mouth, use the name of Jesus when you're tempted, because he is the one that's baiting the hook. This spirit is the one that's luring you. 
It ain't like for those of you all who's married, you know, you're married, your, your wife, she has two breasts. It's not like you're looking at somebody who got three or four breasts. They got two breasts just like your wife do. But why is there so appealing? It's because the spirit of lust is on it and he is baiting the hook, but you don't see what it is. I need you to see my face. Praise God. And then what do you do? You lose holiness. You say, Holy Spirit, come live in me. Come upon me. God, I thank you that I'm filled with righteousness and holiness. God, help me renew my mind, God. Help me be more like you. Glory to God. We command that lust to go, right? And so you say, I bind you, lust. And then you say, you got to get out of here in the name of Jesus. Get that stank spirit out of here. And take that spirit back and throw it out somewhere. You got to get it out of your house. Come on, somebody. You got to get it out of your house. You got to get it away from your kids. You got to get it out of your car. Come on. You got to get it. Out. You got to get it away from. You don't let no lust come and destroy your, your destiny and your anointing. You got to get it away from you. <laughs> Y'all hearing what I'm telling you today? The key word is lust. Write this down. What is lust? Lust is a strong desire. That's all that it is. And sometimes lust ain't bad. There's good lust. The Bible tells us the lust after the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Satan is a, is a perverter. God's a creator, so he just perverts. He perverts lust. Lust, having a strong desire for the kingdom is good. Having a strong desire for Jesus is good. That's not what I'm talking about today. Some of y'all have a strong desire for Krispy Kreme when the light goes on, and you got to bind that Krispy Kreme spirit in the name of Jesus. That ain't what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about ungodly, the spirit of sexual lust. All right. It's the same spirit that motivated David in 2 Samuel. The Bible says there was a time where the kings were supposed to be out at battle. How many of y'all read this before? And David was supposed to be at battle, but at st instead he's at home. He opens up his window. Ironically, he sees a woman named Bathsheba taking a bath. And instead of using his good sense, the spirit of lust blinds him. And he says, take, go get her, bring her to me. He impregnates her puts Uriah, her husband, on the front line, has her husband killed so that he could marry the girl. It, listen, war came into his house. Generations were affected just because David, a man after God's own heart, was blinded by lust in a moment. You don't have one moment to waste. You don't have one. You cannot make one mistake. You're, you, come on, somebody. Your anointing and your calling is too great. Am I preaching to anybody in this house today? It was all the spirit of lust. And if you were to go home, do a word search in your Bible. Go to BibleGateway.com and put in lust. Or go to Google, which Google be lying sometimes. I'm telling you, they be making stuff say what they want to say. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Like our series right now ain't doing what it should do on the social media people because the social media guys, they don't like this whole thing, but I don't even care. Y'all start sharing this stuff like crazy. Start sharing it. We ain't waiting no algorithm man to put this out. They don't like this. They don't like this holiness stuff. They don't like this kind of stuff. You go put this out. You make sure your kids get this and your coworkers get this. I'm telling you the truth now. That was a break. That was a pause for that commercial. You needed to hear that. That's truth. Matthew 5, 28. Watch what the Bible says about lust. <laughs> Watch this. It says, but I tell you that anybody who looks at a woman lustfully, everybody say lustfully, has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Ah! Jesus takes this whole thing up on another level. Because it's not just adultery that's a sin. He's saying if you look with a woman, universal principle, man or a woman, okay, a man with a man, a woman with a man, whoever you're looking at that's not your, your spouse, lustfully, you've committed adultery with her already or him already in your heart. So Jesus takes it up and basically he's talking about lust of the heart here, okay, meaning that it's not just the action of the penetration, it's actually now what you imagine to do. It's you making up your heart, man, I could if I would, man, I want that. It's not saying that you saw it. It's not saying that you even saw it a couple of times. You've actually now meditated on it so much that that's what you want. It's driving you. That's what we call lust of the heart. And watch what he says to do, verse 29. It says, read it together, ready, read. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out, Lord Jesus, and throw it away. Because it's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown in hell. Did the Bible talk about hell? I almost want to say H, yeah, it did, but I don't know if you can handle that. But what I'm saying is that it said what it said. And I think in this generation, we try to change it to what we want it to sound like. No, hell is a real place for those who reject Jesus. Anyway, I read the scripture when I was young and it just scared me. Because I was thinking, like, all the women that I see, I'm going to be blind by the time I'm 15. 
I took this thing so literal. I'm not lying. I didn't read a lot of the Bible when I was young, but I got hold of this scripture, and I just saw one eye hanging here because I really had issues that I was going to have to deal with, right? Now, I'm happy to say that I do not think we're going to bring God glory if we all walk around as the eyeless bandits of Christians. I don't think that's what it's talking about. I don't think that's going to be good news, you know. <laughs> Come with us, but we might guide you out your eyes. But what I think it's saying is that you got to do whatever you got to do to get this sin away from you. If you've been dealing with lust in your heart, red flag, uh, 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 you better do whatever you got to do. I don't care if you got to turn your phone off. I don't care if you got to go back to an old school flip phone. I don't care if you got to go back to snail mail, turn off your email. I don't care if you got to have people come and you don't even have a phone. They got to come knock on your door to get in touch with you like back in the day. You got to do. Is this on? You got to do whatever you got to do so that you can keep your temple pure. You can't go around and say, well, it ain't no big deal why it's killing you. Yes, this is a big deal. Matter of fact, let me show you this in 1 Peter chapter 2. Watch this one. 1 Peter 2, it says, beloved, I beg of you as soldiers and pilgrims, abstain from what? Fleshly lust, because it wages war against what? It wages war against your what? And some of you all are in a war when you go home. You know what you should do, but that phone is calling. You know what you should do, but that website is calling. You know what you should do, but those DMs are calling. And you got to go and disconnect your social media. You got to do, I'm telling you, you got to do whatever you got to do so that you can win in this war. And it says, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims. Do you know what a sojourner is? It's somebody who is a temporary resident. That means that you are in this world, but you're not of this world. That means that you're just passing through, that you are an ambassador of Christ, that when you got born again, you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But there is a prince of the power of the air of this dimension, and if you're not careful, what's in the world will get on you. And since you're a sojourner, don't let the world get on you because you're too filled with the word. And so he says, I beg you, stay away from these fleshy lusts that wage war against your soul. We see another example in Romans chapter 1. Are y'all with me today? Yes. Verse 26. Let's read it together. Ready, read. Because of this, God gave them over to, over to what? Read on. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for what? Unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned what? Natural relations with women and they were inflamed with what? They were inflamed with what? They were inflamed with what? Lust one for another. So they were fueled by this lust. They were um, motivated by this lust. They were inflamed by this lust. The, the spirit of lust had completely blinded them from reality to where it, it controlled their life. That's what happens with pornography. They're fueled by the spirit of lust. And we want people to be free. And if you're in this place listening to this, I believe you're about to get free in Jesus' name. I brought this verse up before. I'm bringing it back just to let you know what the motivating factor is. You go home, do your own word, word search on lust. Some of you all just need to go home and take authority over your house. And just say, in the name of Jesus, everything that is ungodly in here, I'm kicking you out right now, and I'm telling you, I've done this before. Open up your front door and say, every spirit that's not of God, you got to go right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray that the Holy Spirit fills every space in this house, and God gives me a discernment to be able to overcome all the plans of the enemy. What's the answer? Okay, here's the answer. Y'all ready for the answer? First off, you got to know that you're loved by God, okay? Now, I hope you don't feel beat up today because that's not really my goal because we've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. I've been in ministry for 20 years, and I realized that when you preach on sin, Satan makes people feel small and little and condemned and like, I can't wait to leave church so I can go. Really? Instead of running from church, why don't you run to church? Because this is actually a hospital for people who ain't got their stuff together yet because God is trying to set you free. Condemnation does not come from God. It comes from the devil, but conviction does. And my hope is that you feel conviction, not condemnation, conviction. Conviction is like, you know what? That dude telling me the truth. I need to get myself together. Aha, that's God. And you need to step towards that. So God loves you, and so do we. I would never come and get on the platform and put myself 
in the place where people could lie about me and attack me if I did not love you, but I love you enough to give you truth. And it's only the truth of God's word that will set you free. And that's why there is a revival happening in our church. And our church is growing like crazy because there is truth and holiness and God is honoring his word. He watches over his word to perform it. Does anybody believe what I'm saying today? You are in the right place with the right people. Glory. But I can't stay there because what's the answer? I'll give you three R's today. And this is practical. Let's get practical now because some of you all is like, yeah, you, you're right. This is a thing that I, I'm, I would almost say 50% of people in here, this is something that they need to overcome. If, if the stats are right, what I'm seeing, pastors as well, pastors as well. I've been told stories about pastor conferences where the pornography downloaded goes through the roof. And I'm talking to human beings today that have been called to something better, the kingdom of God. This is for you. Here it is. Reveal, remove, and replace. If you want to get set free, you got to reveal, remove, and replace. Say it with me. Reveal, remove, and re Come on, say it again. Reveal, remove, and replace. What does it mean to reveal? The first step towards freedom is that you got to reveal that this is a problem for you. Quit denying it. Quit running from it. Quit making excuses around it. Just admit, tell on yourself to somebody. You ain't got to tell everybody, but you need to tell other mature people that are already free to walk with you and pray with you to put certain passwords on your devices and to keep you accountable, okay? Maybe it's your campus pastor, maybe it's your small group leader. I'm happy to say that we are launching small groups on next Sunday and I would encourage everybody to find themselves a small group if you can. We believe that real life change happens in the context of relationships. There's gonna be basketball groups, biking groups, married people groups, single people groups, cooking out groups. There's gonna be all kinds of groups. What are we trying to do? Create environments where you can talk to each other because you don't get free by holding it all on the inside. The devil loves secret sins when you keep it to yourself, but what I've learned is that when you tell on yourself, it loses its potency. When other people are praying for you, sin ain't as sinful no more. It loses its potency. God begins to work. The Bible says that in James 5, when we confess our faults one to another and pray for each other, we will be healed. Some of your healing is predicated on you getting hot, hot, honest, open, and transparent, you got to reveal it, okay? Now, as it relates to small groups, on tonight, we're going to put online all of the small groups that are opening next week. So this week, jump onto our website, browse through the small groups, and then next Sunday, we're launching a new semester. Small group leaders will be in the lobby at all campuses, and you'll be able to have a conversation with them to see which one best fits you, but they're going to be online this week so you can browse them. I would encourage everybody to go through freedom groups at least one time. If you feel bound to anything, I would encourage everybody at least one time. Now, all of y'all can't go this semester. We ain't got enough groups. But at some point in your journey with a live church, go through a freedom group, okay? Remove, everybody say remove. Here it is, practically. You gotta go home and remove pornography and things that trigger you to wanna go that direction. Okay? You have to set some parental controls on your devices. You have to remove some triggering images on even video games. I see my son playing video games and the little, what is the, the avatar? Is that what it's called? Avatar. Be a little sexy little avatar. I'd be like, that little sexy avatar, my son just playing it. I mean, got it all working and everything. I mean, but I'm telling you that even in the games, there's a lure. Okay, so you got to be very careful to what, you, what you're watching. Now, we love you guys, so we have an actual resource list. All right, matter of fact, everybody do this. Take out your phone. Gainesville, come on, everybody. Orlando, everybody, take out your phone. I know you got one. Yes, I'm looking at you. Come on, take out your phone. Take out your phone. Up in the balcony, please take out your phone. I know you got one. Everybody participate. Take out your phone. Now, this is the problem. Everybody take out your phone, hold it up high, and everybody throw it to the ground. No, I'm just playing. Don't do that. <laughs> That's part of the problem. Some of you all are bound to this. And sometimes the devil is in your device. And you're trying to fight the devil, and it's not the devil. The devil is the device. There's something that's beautiful about stillness. And what this stops you from doing is being still before the Lord. Some of you all haven't heard the voice of God in months, even in years. Some of you all are saved, but you've never heard the voice of God because you hear the voice of the world too often. You have so many notifications. Everybody can get in touch with you, but you don't hear from the one that matters, God. And so sometimes we need to, I don't know if you need to break it, but just do something with this thing, man. 
Do something with this thing. It's in your pocket, right? But anyway, get your phone out. Everybody put your phone out. Everybody put it up in the air, okay? All right. Now, what I want you to do is point it towards the screen, put up my QR code, and I want you to take a picture of this QR code. This is going to be our gift to you. It is our, come on, Gainesville, take a picture of this. I'm going to leave it up for 10 seconds, okay? It is our Sex God's Way Resource Center, okay? Now, inside of this is going to be podcast websites, courses, retreats, workshops, counselors, and psychologists that will help you overcome, overcome sex addictions, pornography addiction, same-sex attraction, and anything that falls under sexual immorality. And I don't know if we have a scroll. Can we scroll it on the whole screen? Maybe. Okay, now check this out. So when you go to the Resource Center, we're going to have all this list of how you overcome pornography. We're going to have books. We're going to have podcasts that you can listen to. We're going to have people who have, that has been their battle for years. We even have people who used to be in the porno industry, but now they're born again. We're going to have books, How to Get Out of Porn, Craig Rochelle. We've got a book by Tim Ross. We've got counselors. We've got a recommendation for psychologists. We've got apps that you can go to, settings that you can put on your phone that will let other people that are your accountability partners know. We've got books about marriage and sex that you can read. Gay Girl, Good God is a great one by Jackie Hill Perry. And if you go to this, start sharing these resources, but we want to be the source source of the source. You should clap right there. That's just a free gift. We, we work hard. Come on, y'all. We work hard. That ain't easy to put all that stuff together. <laughs> all right. So anyway, you're going to get an email or a text tonight, and it'll have the link, or at least by the morning. If you're not a part of our email or text group, make sure that you become a part of that. If you're online somewhere, we want to make sure you have those resources. But the last R is replace. Everybody shout replace. You got to replace pornography with the word of God. So if you're going to take this away, now's your time to sell out for God. You got to replace the spirit of lust with the Holy Spirit. And you got to give yourself to spiritual things. Remember, the way that you walk, the way you get free of the flesh is that you got to walk by the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right. Now, did you enjoy the word of God today? Did you enjoy this today? All right. We're giving you our best. We got nine weeks. Everybody say nine weeks. And it's time to give you an off-ramp today, and I want to pray for some people. This is the most important part of the service, Gainesville, so every head bowed and every eye closed. This is really not about the person on your left or your right or who you came in with today. Listen, this is between you and God. Make no mistake about it, we will all stand before Jesus at some point and give an account, right? Give an account of what we did, what we said, how we behaved. I even believe that this opportunity will be brought back before you when you stand before Jesus and my hope is that your choice is towards him. And so with every head bowed, y'all stay focused with me, and every eye closed all over the building. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I'm not saved, but I wanna be. If you're here and you say, Pastor, I'm a sinner and I know I'm in need of forgiveness. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I've been to church and I've been out of church, I've never been to church before, I don't even know what to believe. Here's the deal. If you take a step towards God by faith, meaning that you don't understand it all yet, but you know it's the right thing to do, I believe he's going to take two towards you. You don't have to know it all to believe. And I would love to pray for you. So on the count of three, if you're here today and you say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to be right with God. I want to be forgiven of my sins. If you're here today, you don't have to be a perfect person to surrender. You can come to God just like you are, and he's going to help you with everything that you are. And So if that's you, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to lift up your hand and wave at me, then you can put it down. I just want to know who I'm praying for at all campuses and online, all right? And so if that's you and you say, Pastor, pray for me. It's my time to be right with God. I want to be forgiven today. Please lift up your hand in one, two, three. Lift it high all over the building and just wave at me for a moment. Thank you. I see hands are going up. Hands, 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 hands. Hand your hand, your hand, your hand, your hand, your hand, your hand, your hand. Those of you all in Gainesville, God sees your hand online. I believe God sees. And we're not going to pray alone. Let's pray this together. Are you ready? Say this, Lord Jesus. Everybody join in. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart today. Forgive me of my sins. From this day forward, I surrender my life to you. Not my way, but your way. Jesus, I believe you died on a cross so that I could live for you. Lord Jesus, heal me, save me, and then use me 
to save others. I'm yours, Lord. I wave the white flag. I surrender all in Jesus' name. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to continue in prayer. Here's the deal. I feel like the Holy Spirit told me to give this one more appeal today. And it's specifically for those of you all who've been battling this sex addiction. You've been battling pornography. You've been battling ungodly images. You know that you've kind of given in here and there to the spirit of lust. But today you want to renounce that. Today you want to repent and turn away from that. And you need some help. I believe the spirit of God is in this place. The Holy Spirit is in this place to set us free. And so on the count of three, if that's you and you say, I'm leaving pornography in the past, so help me God, please lift up your hand on the count of one, two, three. Be bold and lift it up high. Come on, in Jesus' name. Hands are going up all over the auditorium, online and in Gainesville. God sees your hand. You can put your hands down. And I want everybody to join in with me. And I want you to pray this prayer. Say this, Lord Jesus, I believe the same power that rose you from the dead lives in me. I command every spirit of lust, perversion, and pornography to leave my life. I renounce it. I repent of it. Forgive me, O oh God, from the sin. And on today, I receive the Holy Spirit, the power of God, righteousness, holiness, grace. Thank you, Lord, that you make all things new, that you give me clean hands and a pure heart. From this day forward, the temptation is no longer tempting, for the power of God guides my footsteps, for I am yours, Lord. And whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Whom the sun sets free hey, is free indeed. We call you free. No, I'm declaring it now. I call you free in the name of Jesus that every prison door that has chained you is open right now and you are free to move out and be who God's called you to be. Oh, you got to receive this. Come on, receive this. No longer will you take the bait. Come on, somebody. Come on. I just declare in the name of Jesus, not only are you being delivered in this moment, but you're being marked in this moment as somebody that will go and deliver others. I declare that the things that have chased you down and it wasn't even your fault, it was from generation after generation, generational curses are broken off of your life today. And I declare that who the sun sets free is free indeed. Can we give God worship and praise for freedom? Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to Alive Online today. I pray that message was a blessing to you. I pray that the Holy Spirit just takes something from it. And he illuminates it to where your life will never be the same again. If that's the case, make sure you let us know how your life was impacted and changed because of the message on today. We would love for you to share this content. You know, we have a saying in Alive Church that one invite can change a life. We also believe that one share can change a life. I mean, get your share on. God will use your share as a lifeline to reach people around the world. All right. If you like what we're doing here, we would love for you to be a part of our online family. You can do that by hitting subscribe. We want you to be the first to grab hold of all new messages and all new content as they are released. You know, the Bible says that when we give, It'll be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And one of the greatest ways that you can make a difference and change lives is by giving. And so if you would like to sow to the ministry of Alive Church, hit the button below. And I know that God will bless you, and you'll also be a blessing to other people. We love you, and we'll see you real soon. God bless you.